Welcome to part two. You will never get rid of me now because I've got a cheap $10 green screen. This is where we actually turn the knob and we do actually end up with a finished article at the end of this. Take a look. That might do it. And before I get stuck in, I'm going to take my scarf off because um, if you've got a scarf or any loose things, uh, any loose flapping sleeves or things need to be secured. And I'm going to do that now because when it's spinning, if it catches the end of that, it's incredibly powerful. It, it will choke you. Um, a chap I knew a few years, I haven't seen him for years, he's a great friend though, um, had this problem, he had a very long beard and he was using a router one day and very similar thing happened, the spinning uh, fan at the top of the router snagged his beard, pulled it in and nearly broke his chin, it must have been incredibly painful actually, so do be careful with any kind of loose things that might get in the way, I'm going to actually put my sleeves up a bit for this and then they're totally out of harm's way. And we'll have a quick go. Here we go. That seems steady enough, so I have a crack at it with a gouge now. I'll turn this in a bit because it vibrates a bit as you're taking these edges off. It's not so bad once it's smooth. And uh, we'll get it smooth now with the wonderful roughing gouge. through that is the question no not quite oh nearly there though nearly there now just check how are these things doing oh that's good they barely work loose at all i'm delighted with that I'll do both sides there that is good okay a bit more tightening here i'm gonna have to use the parting tool now this is just too close to those doors to come from. So close, so close, just a tiny bit more. <laughs> yeah, we are just, just through, so that's good. Now that's the final diameter. Quick look at the old knob. Yeah, that's going to fit. No, oh yeah, that's going to fit with room to spare. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'm going to do some more roughing off. It's all kind of boring. I'm back in a tip. Right, that seems to have got that to just about the right shape. Can we get the light better? Yes, we can, but only very, very slightly. What about... No, it's really not having any. Never mind. It's all good because you can just about see it. I know because I'm looking in the viewfinder. Um, right, I've now reduced this to roughly, roughly the size of the knob. It's actually a little bit oversized. There's more meat to play with there than I thought, but there's actually enough there to get the dome shape and a bit to spare. I am going to make it thicker than, than where are we? Where's the camera on oh, here? Right, okay. Where's the lens is what I should say. Um, yes, there we are. We can see it. I'm going to make the shank of this new knob a bit thicker than this because it's got a metal ferrule on this one. Usually when I make a thing like this, I like to get the metal ferrule off but uh, it's absolutely jammed on because I, I absolutely boiled the kettle dry and it got very hot. It's melted all the plastic inside 
Um, I'm really pretty sure you can't see how badly melted it is, but it's bad. And it has gripped this ferrule on. Um, if I was making a tool of some kind that was going to take a lot of pressure, I would put a little copper, a little length of copper pipe or some kind of metal tube, saw a little bit off and ram it onto the finished piece and make it the identical size. But it's just not going to matter for this uh, at all. So I'm going to switch on now. I don't actually know what I'm going to do yet. Oh, I did want to say though, right, parting tool, I put it in one way, cut, and I turn it round and cut. And it's so that the side that rubs keeps changing and the tool heats up less quickly that way. And that is why I do that. Right, I think this is going to mostly be spindle gouge. I might even have a crack. No, I don't think I will. I don't, it, the best thing to do this with, right, would be my oval skew chisel. But I can't get the tool rest in close enough, you know. That, that's the problem. It won't go any further that way or that way. So try and get a little bit closer without actually getting too close to the chuck. No, it's, it's pretty firmly jammed against the tailstock there. And that's okay because the, the tailstock doesn't move. But that is the minimum kind of safety gap I really want. So let's have a look. Where is my spindle gouge? <laughs> this is good. <laughs> right, let's find my spindle gouge, peoples, and then uh, I'll crack on with it. <laughs> yes, I, say, I think I've actually got a bit better light there. Now, I wasn't going to use this one, but, you know, it's a lovely little surprise, this. I'd forgotten I'd bought it. It's a Robert Sorby 3 8 inch fingernail spindle gouge, number 840FH. So let's make this a review. I've never used it before. Let's pop it out. Robert Sorby stuff is always really high quality. Um, I quite like a Sorby lathe. It's the, a Sorby lathe is the only other kind of machine that comes in this kind of size that I would trust as much as a record, uh, possibly even more. They are very refined machines. So what have we here? Um, now, unfortunately, I'm slightly flummoxed by the light because I can't see in the viewfinder now. Let's come around behind and see. Okay, right. What we have here... Can you see that profile there? It's kind of a, a fingernail kind of a profile. It sticks out quite a lot, which means you have to be careful as you tip it onto the workpiece because it can, you know, you rest the workpiece against the bevel and very gently bring the tail up and it starts to bite. But it can bite very quickly with, with a long fingernail like that. But beautifully made gouge. Look, a bit of brass in the end there. To, hold everything together. A lovely uh, turned piece of wood, obviously turned by a machine, but uh, to a pattern by, can we see it even? Robert Sorby, it says. Can you see that? Just about Robert Sorby. Absolutely beautiful looking gouge. Let us see what she can do. Nah, that, it, that is very, very pleasing, actually. Real nice, easy cut. I snatched it a couple of times. That's my fault, not the tools. Um, it's just so good. But it cuts a bit quick because of that fingernail profile. Um, this has actually been fettled up for me by the turner himself. He's an amazing sharpener. He taught me to turn and he taught me to sharpen. And I've forgotten most of what he taught me, actually. There's so much of it. Uh, so he very kindly put that on me. They come with a slightly rougher edge than that because they've been ground. But uh, that's, there's nothing unprofessional or bad about that. You know, you are meant to be able to sharpen to the profile you want. And uh, even though I can't, <laughs> the turner knows exactly what profile I use. He's a good mate, so he did it for me. Uh, I'm now going to try and turn the front bit, but I'm going to have to move the camera because I can't get close. Yeah, there we go. Look, that looks a reasonable angle. Let's see. <laughs>
gonna tempt fate any more than that. See if we can get even better exposure. Not really, never mind. But I'm delighted with that. Robert Sorby gouge. Everything that went there wrong there was actually my fault. Nothing to do with Robert Sorby, and certainly nothing to do with the turner's sharpening. Uh, what happens sometimes is the edge comes into contact, and it's very fierce and sharp and new. And it's actually because it's such a good gouge that it's snatched like that. So I'm sure I'll get used to it. And I'm delighted. So there we go. I'm giving that uh, about 15 out of 10, actually. But a lot of that is the turner's sharpening. But certainly 10 out of 10 to Robert Sorby. And I'm going to keep it in its bag. Wonderful stuff. I'm really glad I bought that. 24.49, but that was last year. I don't know what they are now. And uh, it's also a Robert Sorby fingernail bowl gouge that I bought uh, at the same time last year, which I used in the uh, the video of the dish with lid, which never quite made it. I'll put a link to that, that actually, because uh, that is another wonderful record number one job. Okay, let's check this against the original knob. It's not quite the same shape because of that snatch, but it is... Wow, it's the identical, identical outside diameter. That's a bit of luck. I wasn't even trying for that, but that, that is a bit of luck. Slightly marked. I think I'll clean it up with sandpaper now, and I'm just going to part it off. And then we'll turn it round in a chuck and try and get some kind of hole down it if I can uh, actually find a drill. Now, how long is the shank? That's quite important because, you know, that's how far it's got to be above the top of the kettle. Don't want any less, any less than that. Yeah, oh yeah, the parting tool goes in with room to spare, so that shouldn't be too bad. I'm not going to go all the way, but... I do not wish to tempt fate any more than that. Now, I wonder if it will snap off. If you're ever going to snap the thing off, get the points out of the way, because your hand kind of can quite easily move a bit further than you meant it to. What's all? Oh, yeah, nice and easy. Look at that. Great. And we have just about the replacement knob dummy big thing, which is about to get turned into the real thing. And you know what? I'm going to have to put the small jaws on again, but I don't mind because they've got just exactly enough screws. So that's going to be great. OK, let's sort that out. And after all that, she doesn't quite fit. It's annoying, isn't it? So I'm going to have to do this all by hand now and finish it. But it's not going to be too difficult. Just a, a tweak here and a tweak there. And I will be right back with you. And great. We've actually come up with a knob by the end of that. Here it is. You can see it's kind of, uh, it's pretty much the same shape as I was after. Uh, not identical, but it doesn't need to be. The point is I can have a cup of tea now. I drilled it out using my pillar drill. Sorry I didn't get any footage of that, but it's really dark down there. Uh, but you know, I got the right size drill bit to just uh, cover the inside of the screw and not the thread so that they bite. And it screws in nicely like that. So then, now then, let's just get hold of this, which is the original lid that the thing broke off. Okay, so I'm gonna pop the screw through there so it sticks out and then fit it into here. Do it up a bit till it's bitten and then we'll get the screwdriver in and tighten that down and I think we're gonna have ourselves a lid, I hope, I pray. Let's keep on tightening. Don't let it split now and make there have to be a part 20 before it's all done. No, we're going to get away with part two. There it is. It's on there now. And just to show you what it looks like, it's on my slightly grotty kettle. Slightly grotty because it all got burned when I boiled it dry. But there it is. Ain't she a beautiful sight? Whether we've got a great big convoy or not, I think that is gorgeous. Thanks very much for watching, folks. There'll be more turning videos, probably loads more green screen antics and stuff as well. Uh, I really appreciate all you first, all you who subscribed and have been sharing the stuff around. Um, I try to do an upload every, well, I do an upload every single day, actually, early in the morning. And uh, there'll be more uploads, you know, longer videos, two or three times a week. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. 
At the moment it's winter, I'm not getting as much done as I wanted to because we haven't got the light half the time and the rest of the time it's freezing cold. Um, but there we go, we've got, things got, we've got things going today. Spring is coming. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, share me around a bit if you can. Keep it real. Keep it twig, brother. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.